Welcome to MVA and our first video examining the ideas and methods behind Shakespeare's tragedy, Macbeth. Today I'll be giving you a brief plot summary and introducing you to some of the context behind the play. There are five acts in the play and for each of these you might want to jot down some notes or key things to remember so when you're revising you don't forget the order of events. Let's begin then. Act 1. The play opens with three witches, or weird sisters, who are waiting for Macbeth. This is just before we meet King Duncan, who is told about how brave Macbeth has been in a battle against Norway. The witches meet Macbeth and Banquo making their way home, prophesying that Macbeth can be promoted to Thane of Cawdor and then crowned king. Banquo is told he won't become king, but his son will. Macbeth then writes a letter to Lady Macbeth, who starts to plot herself, asking the spirits to help her. She tells Macbeth her plans, and they decide to kill Duncan, who's staying at the castle that night. Macbeth starts getting some second thoughts about killing his pal, the king, but Lady Macbeth manipulates him into agreeing once again, and the treacherous plot is underway. Act 2. Before killing the king, Macbeth begins to hallucinate, seeing a dagger in front of him. He ignores this and kills the king anyway, returning with the bloody daggers meant for the guards. Now, this angers Lady Macbeth, who takes the daggers back to the chamber and smears the drugged guards with the blood. The castle wakes, realising that Duncan has been murdered. His sons, Malcolm and Donalbain, flee for their lives and run to Ireland and England. Act 3. Act 3 opens with Banquo very suspicious of Macbeth, who's holding a banquet to celebrate his coronation. Macbeth worries about Banquo's suspicions and hires two murderers to track Banquo whilst he's out riding with his son, Fleance. Macbeth and Lady Macbeth discuss their troubles, with Macbeth urging Lady Macbeth to stay as innocent as possible. He won't tell her the next part of his plan. Meanwhile, the murderers find Banquo and kill him, but his son Fleance escapes. Back at the feast, Macbeth greets his guests, but soon thinks he can see the ghost of Banquo sitting in his seat. His disturbed reaction worries the guests and Lady Macbeth, who asks them to leave. Act 4. Macbeth revisits the witches for more information, and they give him three more prophecies. To beware of Macduff, no one born of a woman can harm him, and he is safe until the woods move towards the castle. Macbeth thinks these all seem very unlikely to come true, so begins to think of himself as invincible. To be sure, he sends murderers to Macduff's castle in Fife, and they murder his entire family. When Macduff finds out, he rounds up the British army to seek revenge. Act 5. Act 5 opens, and things are certainly starting to unravel for the Macbeths. This starts with Lady Macbeth sleepwalking and hallucinating, clearly disturbed by the killing of Duncan. Macbeth hears of an army approaching, but believes that he has nothing to fear. The doctor tells him of Lady Macbeth's condition, so Macbeth asks him to cure her. Macduff and the British army conceal themselves from view by using branches from the woods, which then start to move towards the castle. Macbeth finds out that Lady Macbeth is dead, then gets scared as he hears that the second prophecy from the witches has come true. There's a final battle with Macduff, who reveals he was born by C-section, before Macbeth is beheaded and Malcolm is crowned the rightful king. So, that's the story. Lots to take in, and you might need to watch this a couple more times to feel really confident. We're now going to have a look at the context. The context is basically any important background information that may have impacted the writer, Shakespeare, or the audience, Jacobian, at the time. 
Context. In the exam, you'll be marked on your contextual links. So here are five things you need to know about the play. King James was the king in Scotland at the time Macbeth was written. So whenever you talk about the effect, make sure to mention the Jacobian audience. King James was scared of witches, thinking they raised a storm to try and shipwreck him between England and Scotland. Anyone caught doing witchcraft or talking to spirits was sentenced to death. This is possibly why the witches have such a sinister role of influencing the killing of the king. Now, the role of a man was to be brave and strong. What a cliche. In Jacobian times, the more violent you were in battle, the more you were praised. Now, maybe it makes sense as to why Macbeth was so violent at the start of the play. The role of women was to serve their husbands. They were to be obedient, passive, and do everything they possibly can to please their man. They weren't allowed to talk back or do anything that was considered a man's job. This makes Lady Macbeth's influence over her husband all the more condemnable and shocking to that particular audience. She's just meant to sit there and look pretty, not conspire to kill the king. King James is said to have a relative called Banquo, but the real Banquo wasn't as nice as Shakespeare's version. Presumably, Shakespeare did this so he could keep in the king's good graces. There are so many more contextual links, which we'll cover as we explore key characters and themes in more videos. For now, these were the main things you needed to know about the plot and its historical context. I'm Kate with MVA, and I hope this has been a helpful summary of Macbeth.